Okay, hello, hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. So today I felt like I was about to be lectured because I thought that all of you guys were going to be here, you know, waiting for me because I was running a little bit late because of the class that I had before. But no, here I am and here we are. So that's nice. That is great, you know, to, to see you guys once again. Um, we are going to be, well, covering a few things tonight. Remember that yesterday we were not able to finish with the technology thing. So tonight we're going to wrap it up with that. We're going to finish, you know, talking about technology. And then we're going to start talking about um, how to use the passive voice. Because, well, of course, passive is... Hmm, good question. So passive... It's very useful. It's very common. I think that you guys already have an idea, a perspective on how to use it or when to use it. So I think it's not going to be, you know, too hard for you to understand how to use passive. Just as a plain and straight up clarifier, I would say that the passive is simply, you know, talking about um, or well, saying sentences or stating sentences that do not necessarily have a subject they or when you don't know who the subject is as well so that's basically passive however there are of course more rules to it more things that we need to understand we need to learn about the passive voice therefore tonight we are going to um to be you know following the idea or to continue with the idea of how to to use the passive voice and of course a few changes or tiny changes that can take place in the different tenses that we have in English. So that's part of like the biggest part of the class tonight. Um, so let's hope, you know, that we have a great time. And of course, let's hope that there are no cuts, no interruptions. Um, however, tonight we also have the great chance of hearing, you know, from Claudia and the presentation that she's going to make. Um, so I think we're going to start with that. Let's straight on. And uh, okay. Thank you for letting us know, Imelda. Thank you very much. Hopefully, you know, you're not going to have as many issues as I did yesterday. Hopefully, everything is going to work um, nice and smooth. But now, Claudia, we're going to get to hear from you. And I hope you, you know, you have a nice chunk of information to share with us. So let's see. What is the topic and what is the information that you will share this evening? Good evening, everyone. Evening. Uh, my topic is the benefits of learning online. This modality was used as result, result pardon, of the COVID pandemic when the quarantine ended um, to avoid fewer contagion. Many school and university choose to use this morality. Some benefits of the student online are, you can do it from the comfort of your home. You can access the study material from your computer or from your mobile. You can review the class as many times as you want to be recorded. You don't have to be taking notes so fast. You can be in pajamas or comfort is closed. Studying online uh, means not having to move to a place to attend in class, deal with traffic, leave your children in the care of another person, or ask permission to leave before work. Virtual classes are often less intimidating than face-to-face -face classes, which help increase participation. These are some of what I consider benefits of studying online. All right. Great. <laughs> Very good. So, yeah, I mean, I think I will not, I will have to agree with basically all of them because all of them come as benefits. You know, all of them are um, things that have helped us a lot. And as you said, uh, what created the boom on e learning or online classes was basically a situation like the one we lived two years ago, or sorry, almost three years ago. But the thing is that, yeah, that's what basically uh, started this whole thing. I don't know 
in terms of like, you know, teachers, what do they prefer? In my perspective, if you ask me, I prefer face-to-face -face classes. It's my favorite method because, I mean, online, I do like it because, yeah, it's like it works. Um, Mostly for courses like this, for example, it's something that I consider that works because I feel like most of you guys are self-motivated. You know, you have the eager to learn. It's like um, you have the desire. However, in classes that are um for like, children mostly you know in in schools or high schools it's a little bit harder i will not mention universities in this because it's a little bit different with universities it has to be similar to this you know students are supposed to be more inspired more um willing to learn uh so it's like you know responsibility is also part of the game but um when it comes to the the virtual classes in my perspective, it's better to have face-to-face -face classes just for the practice and for the presence. But as you said, we're talking about benefits. We're not talking about cons, about uh, or from uh, online learning. And those, that, as you mentioned, are always going to be benefits. One of the ones that I do love a lot is uh, not having to move, you know, not having to spend on... Uh, on gas or um, on transport in general. So that's one of the ones that I will say that it's a great benefit. Um, also, it's more comfortable, as you said, because it's less, less um, challenging as, you know, <laughs> but the thing is that if you don't want to answer, you can simply turn off your camera and pretend like you're not there, you know? And it's like, yeah, I'm not here. However, in face-to-face -face classes, if you get a, a question, it's like, well, you have no escape. Or you have one maybe saying, I don't remember, I don't know, uh, maybe. But uh, with online classes, it's like, okay, I'm not turning on my microphone and he's got to move on. Or at least, for example, that's something that I, I do. I don't know about the rest of the teachers. I have heard that there are, that are some that are a little bit more strict when it comes to participating. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also something that comes as a benefit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's great also because... Actually, yesterday, I was filling up a survey about online classes, and it's really fresh here in my in my head right now, the topic, because I was also stating that um, one of the things that makes it great is that, you know, you have access to more courses. It's like you have access to more information, information for, for places that if it wasn't because of online learning, you will not even be able to dream about learning from from those places. Like for example, you can enroll in um in workshops from where Germany, Japan, places all over the world, and you can do it because because of this, because of e-learning. So it's a great great benefit if you ask me from that point of view. But in terms of preferences, I will always root for face to face classes. But still, so, um, well, let's get to talk about technology. Um, I hope uh, that you guys are having a great time, you know, that you're doing amazing lately. And let's see, we have these that we had pending from yesterday, which is tech, talking a little bit about tech. And we did already read um, all these definitions. Now, we have the first word, download. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I will read the definitions once again because I know it's not going to be as fresh as it was yesterday. So I will do a quick reading on the definitions. We have letter A, which is a software available for free, radio or TV shows for MP3 mm -hmm. player, transfer files to your computer, harmful software that attacks computers, short messages that are faster than email, a place that has wireless internet access, software that secretly records your online activity, a website where people have discussions, a camera that sends live video over the internet, an online journal of personal opinions. So here we go. Let's see. Uh, download. What or how can you guys define download? What will be the definition for this one? I think it's transfer files to your computer. Okay, that sounded amazing. 
Great. <laughs> so yeah, it's transfer files to your computer. So it will be letter C. So no bastante bien. Me hasta me dieron ganas de decir amen al final. So yeah, it's transfer <laughs> files to your computers. Uh, how about, wait, how about a chat room? How can you define a chat room? A website where people... A website where people have discussions. Great. A website where people have discussions. That will be a chat room. Amazing. How about we talk about a hotspot? What is a hotspot? A place that has wireless internet access. Great. A hotspot is a place that has wireless internet access. Um, have you guys ever activated a hotspot on your phone? Have you, do you use it, Lorena? Do you ever use your hotspot? Maybe sometimes. Okay. <laughs> but I, I, I have to ask someone to, to help me doing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. In my case, for example, I am the, the, you know, the official hotspot for my family. Whenever we have family coming from the U.S., it's like they're all asking me to go with them because it's like, you are Wi-Fi everywhere we go. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm the hotspot in the family. Um Great. So, how about a blog? How can you guys define a blog? An online journal. An online journal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A blog is an online online journal of personal opinions. Great. Very good. How about freeware? What's freeware? Software available for free. Software available for free. Amazing. Thank you very much. So, it will be software available for free. How about a webcam? That's easy, right? What's a webcam? A web a camera that says live you know, over the internet. Yeah, like live over the mm -hmm. internet. Yeah. It's a camera where oh well, sorry, a camera that sends live video. A video over. Day and day. Okay, so there we go. That's letter I. How about a podcast? What is a podcast? Those audio que yo mando. <laughs> what is a podcast? <laughs> Could be an online journal of personal opinion. Mm, that would be a blog. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be a blog. Radio, a radio or TV show. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, it's a radio. It's, the thing is that definition has evolved. That's, that's a, the thing. But, you know, the definition has evolved. Back in the day, a podcast was simply that. It was a radio or TV show that people recorded as an MP3 player or for an MP3 player. But it wasn't, um like, designed for for that it was you know it, it was designed for the radio it was designed designed for the tv but nowadays is like people create podcasts with the idea of them being podcasts so it's it's different now you know back in the day it was just like a practice that people had like you know i wasn't able to listen to the to the program today so i recorded and then I, then i'll listen to it later but now a podcast is like an official thing a program is one thing However, it's a still working like that because there are still programs or like radio programs that are recorded and then presented as a podcast as a podcast. But the regular podcast that we know and like, at least in my opinion nowadays, is just that. You know, it, it comes with the idea of it being a podcast, of it being, you know, that a thing that you can listen to um while you're driving or, or so. Now, um, and now that I mentioned this. Who here likes podcasts? Do you guys even listen to podcasts? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah, um, actually, I had my own podcast. Oh, really? When you should, you should share. I had. <laughs> what? Oh, you had. You used to have. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, oh. I used to have. And uh, what, what was it was about? about uh, it was about human rights. And oh, a yeah. volunteer that I was made apart, but not yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the podcast is online, so yeah, if you can hear it. <laughs> oh, the name uh, of the podcast is No No Puede Quedar Impune. All right. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. Um, I, I'm sorry that I forgot. But are are you like uh um are in loss? Huh? You, you I, work, I can I can understand. Do you work in in laws or things like those? No, I it, no. Oh. <laughs> but what do you do? 
<laughs> no, eh, I did a, a volunteer uh, in an uh, NGO from uh -huh. Argentina, and uh -huh. I created my own podcast because I study uh, international affairs, and I currently study my um my thesis in uh -huh. migration. So that is uh, the reason that I created my own podcast. So I express my my knowledge. Oh, all right, great. That's nice. So very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was asking you because um, you know, it's just like uh, it sounded like you know, it, it's something that has a lot to do with with loss. Even in in my case, my sister is um, she's living for Costa Rica on Friday, I think. Or Saturday? No, it's Saturday morning because she's going to participate on a on a. It's I don't know how to refer to that. It's like a conference, in my opinion. But she says it's more like a contest. So I don't know how to define it. She knows best, you know. Um, but it's about human rights as well. So that's what you know caught my attention, and I was like, oh, is she in laws? I did sort of remember it was international mm -hmm. affairs, but uh -huh. I wasn't sure. So great. But that was my dream. <laughs> All right. Great. Very nice. Uh, and Leslie, just as an update, I am trying to convince my girlfriend to go to Sushi King. Uh I don't know if it's gonna I don't know if it's gonna <laughs> work uh, before the concert on, on next Friday. So I'm trying to com convince her. Okay. The thing is that um she prefers to go to eat after the concert, you know, and Sushi King is going to be closed by that time, I think. So mm, yeah, yeah, they close at like and nine i think uh-huh uh -huh, nine or nine or like nine something but mm -hmm. the concert uh, ends around that hour so i don't recommend it <laughs> no i do not recommend it either so it's like yeah she says that the problem is that she's very bad with her stomach and she wants to enjoy the concert so she told me like i would prefer to go eat afterwards so if i get you know sick it's going to be after the concert and not during the concert and she wants to enjoy the whole thing so it's like ah Dang it. So maybe, maybe I'll go because we are staying like two blocks away from Sushi King. So it's not really that far. So I might just go, you know, grab something, go back to the Airbnb and then go to the concert. <laughs> but yeah. But that week they have a promo in Sushi King. I think it's $29 and there are 40 pieces of sushi. That's a lot. For $29. Yeah. Wow, but it's so delicious. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, um, I'll just go, you know, <laughs> leave her at the concert and go back to the Airbnb to have all the sushi. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's, it was just an update, you know. It's an update on the on the situation. Moving on. Spyware. How do you guys define? Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. I was about to ask you. Um in the case of Lorena, what has been your favorite podcast so far? Um, last night I heard one about uh, the result when you don't sleep. Mm. I like it a lot. Yeah, it was in, in English. Mm -hmm. and yeah, oh, congrats. And, and what, yeah, because I, I tried to listen then in English and it was uh, like uh, somebody that. Uh, died after 48 hours that 48 days that he didn't sleep and mm -hmm. then he died wow <laughs> and it was very interesting yeah so you all were like day. you were like hearing all the details that come with you know not yeah. sleeping <laughs> well yeah uh-huh yes great uh and how about in the case of Gabby what is your favorite podcast me mm-hmm uh well i listen in in spotify three uh just i don't i don't know how to say it in english it's psychology al desnudo i, I have, don't know if we can say I naked have, yeah like naked that. psychology kind of okay. maybe if you want to you know if you want to yeah you could say it like that yeah yeah uh, and i remember that i was listening crecimiento personal personal uh, growing growth uh-huh growth yeah and i don't remember the 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 third one but i prefer to listen to them when uh well i driving to my work 
mm -hmm. or when I return to home mm -hmm. or in the traffic. Mm -hmm. And I try to listen uh, books too, but I, the ones that uh, are like read for somebody else, I don't know if it consider uh, uh, a, a podcast because they are like talking about the book and their personal opinion about the book. Mm. But I consider that it's kind of a podcast. Yeah. That's it. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Very nice. Now, in my case, my picks are not the best. I have to be honest. Um, I'll start from the worst. My worst favorite podcast on Spotify is one by La Choli. But I grew up listening to the radio novelas. So I uh, used to love listening to A Las Villas Con Pisto, Les Gustan Los Vichitalle. That was like my favorite, you know, uh, radio program when I was younger. Then one that I really loved when I uh, first listened to it was Caso 63. I don't know if you guys have ever, you know, tried that one. That's That was really intriguing. And the one that, you know, that comes from a teacher is listening to Duolingo Tales. I don't know if you guys ever have ever tried it, but Duolingo Tales is amazing. I do that when I'm with my sisters um, on, on the car. Or, sorry, it's in the car. Yeah, on will be like on the bus. But the thing is, like when I'm in the car with them, I like to listen to Duolingo Tales because I help, that helps me practice and helps them learn a little. So, yeah. When it comes to more like traditional sort of podcasts, I do listen to them. I listen, for example, for mechanics sort of sort of podcasts or um even the Bible. There are some podcasts about the Bible that I do like to listen um to, but I do am not like a huge podcast listener regarding to regarding like personal growth or things like those. I prefer to listen to more like entertaining sort of things but still you know it's great that we have um you know preferences or different preferences because that's what makes us unique okay next one up then spyware what or how can you guys define spyware uh, a software oh, wow. that so really records your online activity great Duty, that yeah. Would, yeah that will be a spyware and uh, how about we talk about instant messaging? That was easy, right? Instant yeah. messaging. Third message that I'm faster than email. All right. So, yes, that is an instant message. It would be letter E. And uh, ooh, what? Okay. How about we talk now about um, one sec. There we go. Um, computer virus. How can you define a computer virus? Harmful software, 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 software attacks computers. computers. <laughs> All right. I'm in. Harmful software <laughs> that attacks computers. That's the one. Already then. So we already know this. As I said, it's easy for us. It's like, you know, it's the new era. So we all know how it works. We all know many things about um, how computers work nowadays. Um, so yeah, great. Very good. Thank you, guys. Now, moving on into passive. As I said before, Passive voice is a form of uh, or like a structure of grammar that we use when we don't know who the, the main subject is or when we don't want to give the main subject of a sentence a huge relevance. So it's not important. It's not like the main focus of this of these sentence. So we just use the passive to avoid um putting the light, you know, on this subject. So that's when we are going to be using the passive voice. We have here, use passive tense for actions where the emphasis is on the object of the action, not the subject, but the object. So the first example comes, use the passive of the present continuous for ongoing actions. So passive of present continuous is going to be used for ongoing actions. So something that I, like an increasing number of, the, uh, of degrees are being offered online. An increasing number of degrees are being offered online. So this is something that is considered an ongoing action, something that is happening and is, well, due to continue happening. So an increasing number 
of degrees are being offered online. What is the difference here? Well, the difference is that there is no need to place a focus on um, the increasing the increasing number of degrees. You know, it's not important. This is what is important, that they are being offered online. So that's going to be like the main focus of this sentence. Now, how will this sound if it was an active sentence? Well, it will be something like, um, many degrees are offered or being offered online nowadays. That would be kind of how it would work. You know, many degrees or there are many um, degrees that are being offered online nowadays. So this part, this of the of the sentence, will have to be closer to the subject just so that the subject has the main importance in the sentence. So that's what will happen. Or um, maybe maybe another example would be that um, there are many degrees offered online nowadays. So we will take away our being from the equation and we're going to be left only with offered that will basically just put all the importance on the subject and not necessarily on the object of the sentence. But here, when we use the passive, we are moving that attention and putting the attention on the, on the object and leaving aside or leaving with like less relevance this part over here, which is increased number of degrees, which would be the subject. All right, then, so for this, uh, as I said, you know, we use the present continues for ongoing actions, things that are happening now and are, are due to continue happening. Now, we use a passive of the present perfect for recently completed actions. Once again, we come to present perfect as to talk about recently completed actions. So, it would sound something like, more music has been downloaded this year than ever before. So, more music has been downloaded this year than ever before. Um, maybe we can say something like more burgers have been sold by McDonald's now that they offer different sauces. That could be, you know, um, a way in which you can uh, express this. How would this sound, for example, if it was an active sentence? Well, in an active sentence, the sentence that I provided will be McDonald's has sold more burgers than before now that they offer uh, more sauces. There you mentioned McDonald's right at the beginning. That means that the subject takes away all the importance, all the highlights from this sentence. So the subject will be the main point. But with example that I placed that more burgers have been sold by McDonald's now that they offer more sauces. I don't know if that's true though. Uh, it's just an example. Uh, there is no necessary necessarily an important our importance over McDonald's. The importance is that the burgers or that more burgers are being sold or have been sold. Um, so yeah, that's what happens when we use the passive ones. Again, here, if it was um the case of an active sentence, uh, the passive says more music has been downloaded this year than ever before. It would sound something like maybe Apple Music reports many downloads on its app or more downloads on its app than never before. So we say Apple Music first, and that means that the main importance is going to be on Apple Music. We can change Apple Music by Spotify. Yes, of course. We can say, for example, Spotify has reported that um, the app reports more downloads this year than never before. And once again, the importance is going to be on Spotify not on the fact that there have been more music or there has been more music being downloaded. So those are the switches. Those are the changes that are going to establish if it's an active or a passive sentence. Passives are better when you are trying to present information that you consider to be relevant. If the information is simply a complement for the subject, it's okay to leave it as an active sentence. But if you want the information to be the relevant part, you will have to go with a passive voice and avoid using the subject at the beginning and try to, you know, work around not needing 
a subject, not including a subject at the very beginning of the sentence. Now, uh, this then is for something that has been completed recently, which is the present perfect. And then we have the future. Well, how can we use future uh, with passive or passive with future? You will have to sound something like this. Oh, well, the first thing is explanation. We use will plus passive or being going to plus passive for actions that will begin in the future. So something that is about to be started, we are going to use it or to say it in a passive voice. More computers will be infected by viruses. More computers will be infected by viruses. So here is another detail. This is one of my favorite details, actually, about the passive voice. When you use by, when you use by, that is the best way and the easiest way of creating a sentence that is in passive. Because here, you include the subject, but at the end of the sentence, by using by, yeah. And by is going to mean simply that this is the person or the, the subject performing the action. But this also means that this person is not necessarily important here. Now, in the previous examples, we don't have a straight up, um, a straight up what? A straight up subject. Because here, for example, uh, an increasing number of degrees are being offered online. We don't have a subject, a clear subject. A clear subject might be, for example, um, a university. So it would sound an increasing number of degrees are being offered online by universities. So that would be the subject, the university. If it was an active sentence, taking university as a subject in the active form, it will be universities are, in, are offering or uh, um, have a program that has been offering an increasing number of degrees online. So that will be, once again, in an active sentence, having university as a subject. But here, it doesn't have a subject. In this one, it doesn't have a subject either because we don't necessarily have someone that is performing the action. What we're, sorry, what we're presenting is the action itself. We simply want to state what's the action, but we are not necessarily mentioning who is performing said action. So once again, it's an, a passive voice, a passive voice sentence without a subject. But here, when you use by to introduce a subject, it's the easiest and the most common way of using um, the passive. Because we should first mention the activity or the action, and then you mention who has performed the action. But once again, taking away the... Um, like the main highlight from these who. So it is more people or more, sorry, more computers uh, will be infected by viruses. If it was active, it will be viruses will infect more computers. So that will be in the case of an active voice sentence. Viruses will infect more computers. And uh, the second example we have, more healthcare sites are going to be used by people from home. So if it was an active sentence, it will have to be people will use or are going to use more um, healthcare say, sites from home. So people will use or are going to be using or are going to use, sorry, are going to use um, more healthcare sites from home. So here people are going to um, happen to be the main focus and they're going to be the ones performing the action. So that's you know the, the reason why passive is very useful mostly for introducing um details about investigations, details about how um like numbers on situations are going or how results of situations are going because you are using the information first and the subject right after. Now, another example, or this is of course away from this that will work perfectly is when you don't know who has taken something. Like for example, if you're like at a meeting and um, if 
let's say that you had what? You had your cell phone laying on a table there, and then you don't find your cell phone. You can say, hey, I think someone has taken my cell phone. So you're not necessarily stating a straight up who, but you're saying when you use someone is an indefinite noun. So that means that the subject is indefinite as well. So you say someone has taken my phone. And when you say also has taken, that is a passive voice sentence. So it will mean that you're stating, you know, the action that somebody has performed, but you're not necessarily saying straight up, like um, a person in this room has taken my phone. Because if you say it like that, it will be like a, an accusation. But if you say someone has taken my phone, it's more like a request, like a question sort of thing. Um, like you're trying to indicate or investigate who has taken your phone. So that's a little bit of a difference there. When uh, you use passive voice, you, you make the information be the main focus, not the person, not the subject. And that's why it's also useful, you know, when you have those sort of like complicated situations when you don't want to necessarily blame someone, but you're simply trying to find out who did something um let's say for example another thing that is less complicated at home you had some cookies uh and the last cookie is gone so you can say someone has eaten the last cookie so that means you know that you're not accusing anyone but you're just stating that you know the last cookie is gone so someone has of course eaten the last cookie so yeah those are the main uses for passive now I would like to hear some examples coming from you guys. I know that this is a little bit tricky. These examples are not going to be as easy, but uh, we'll see. You know, I would like to hear what examples can come from, from your brains. Um, the main one that I would like to hear are, is going to be this, the one related to the future, because I feel like it's going to be also the one that we are going to be using more, um, more commonly. This one's these other versions are useful and yes, if you want, of course, it's accepted. But um, these other versions are more common for like, um, like sort of news things or official um, record presentations. So it's not like an everyday sort of thing. However, the future sort of passive use is something that will happen more often. You know, it's going to be more of a kind of like an everyday sort of thing. All right. So, any questions before we go into the into the examples? Do you guys have any questions related to this um, passive voice use with present continuous, present perfect, and future? And the third one, I was listening, and I I when you made the change using the in the other way, people would you repeat that? Oh yeah, the active for the second yeah. sentence. Okay, so in this case. We will not use from home straight up because from home is just like uh like a what you call it it's just like an adjective for the people. So we're only going to take people as the subject, and the sentence will have to sound something like people, people. are going to use. We're not going to use going to be using or going to be used. Uh, so is people are going to use. More, more healthcare sites from home. So that will be the active version of it. People okay. are going to use more healthcare sites from home. So basically that's um that's how it will work. Yeah. People okay, uh-huh. People it could are be going in a in an active voice. Mm -hmm. In active voice, it will be like that. People are going to use more healthcare sites from home. Because if okay. you say people from home are going to use more active, uh, sorry, more um, healthcare sites, that will make no sense. It will be very hard to understand, you know, people from home, like that will make no sense. So we leave this as a compliment at the very end of the sentence in both cases, in passive and in active ways. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, and um, then the other thing is this, you know, the using the use of by to introduce um, the subject is very useful because in that way you make responsible the person of the or the subject for the action. 
So by using by, that's basically what you're doing. But now, the examples then. So what can be some examples that you guys can come up with when you use passive voice in the future? Um, let's see. Let's go. Let's go hunting. Uh, in the case of uh, Imelda, can you come up with an example or can you think of an example using the passive voice in the future? Already, maybe not Imelda. How about how about you, Lorena? Can you come up with an example using the passive voice in the future? I was thinking about the 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 word sordos, the the verb sordos. Or I I want to say more children will be sordos. Death. In or or the okay death. Death. Death in the future or or some late some years later. Mm hmm. More children are going to be. Oh well, in this case, I think are going to become. Okay, to become. Uh huh. Become because it's something that is you know I think that you're referring to like uh technology or the use of like yeah because it's say... become. uh huh yeah. so yeah it's it become then so more children okay. are going to become deaf. 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 In the next. Generation, maybe? Maybe? Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, in the next generation. Now, would you like to use a subject here at the end or no? No, it's okay. No, okay. So more children are going to become deaf in the next generation. That's just like a prediction that you have. So great. Yeah, <laughs> that's a way, you know, in which you can um you can express it. So nice, very nice. Uh, now, if you want it, if I'm just gonna give you you know the option. If you wanted to add like a um a subject, you could use by the use. Ah, you explain. Uh -huh. Or by the abuse. Uh -huh. By the abuse of uh, uh earphones. So yeah, by the abuse of earphones. Now, how this will sound in an active form? Well, we will take away a few parts because in an active form for this sentence. It will be earphones are going to cause or earphones um are going to make more children become deaf in the next generation. So it will be a whole mm -hmm. scramble. In an active yeah. voice, it will be a whole scramble. But yeah. in, in the passive, it works as it is. You know, more children are going well, to become deaf in the next generation by the abuse of earphones. If it was active, it will be earphones are going to cause uh, or are going to, yeah, cause more children to become deaf in the next generation. So as I said, it's a scramble. But, you okay. know, yeah, it's, 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 uh, here the, the what, what is important is the information, not who is causing it. So we're going to leave it like this. More children are going to become deaf in the next generation. Oh, yeah, that's another, another thing. Um, passive voice is very common in titles like in newspaper titles you know when you want to call people's attention because you're presenting the information is right on their faces and it's like here here's your info um here's what's happening here's what's gonna happen so this sounds very much like that you know very much like a like a newspaper title more children are going to become deaf in the next generation and then it's like it has caught my attention i want to know more i want to know why now so that's why Many newspapers use this as their main way of like um writing their titles for the news. Why why you we should we sh we couldn't use will. More children will be uh, on the because our going is like a, an action that is right now happening that is not that like moving, no? Yeah, you can say more children will become will become deaf in the next generation. Now, the reason why, remember, it's always the advice that I give you, if you prefer to use are going to, um, is because will is more certain. Will is supposed to be uh -uh, like okay. very, very sure. So when you okay. use will, it's like, you know, you have even carried out a study about it and now you're sure mm -hmm. that this is happening. Uh -huh. okay. And going to is a little bit more flexible. It's like, yeah. it's going to happen <laughs> because of this, this and this and that. 
but it's not like a hundred percent sure. And will yeah. is like a ninety percent sure. So yeah, that's why it's it's not like highly recommended to use will when you do um saving predictions like this. But yeah, I mean, of course, if you okay. want, if you're like a newspaper and you want your um your title to sound more attractive or more <laughs> um, como era la la palabra en cuanto a lo que hablábamos el otro día, um, more controversial, controversial, let's say, you are going to use will because will feels more like okay, it's happening, something is happening. Will will make you want to read it. So yeah, it's it's just. The you know how you play with the words that can uh bring you success in the case of you being a, a, a newspaper. Okay, how about uh in the case of uh let's see, Luis, can you think of a, an example of a sentence using the passive voice? Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes, uh, let me see. Uh the houses mm -hmm. in future mm -hmm. will be more expensive. Okay, will be more expensive. Okay, now here we will have to make a few changes because this sounds a little like an active sentence. The houses in the future will be more expensive. Um, we can say, for example, the houses will be more expensive in the future. And that will turn it into a passive voice. The houses will be more expensive in the future. So this will make it sound a little bit more as a passive sentence, instead of saying the houses in the future will be more expensive. Because that's more like, you know, the houses are performing the action. But here it's not necessarily um, following the same idea. But great, you know, you had an, an, an idea, you were cooking a great um, sentence. But still, sometimes we have to move the thing that has to do with time to the end of the sentence. So that, as you see here, for example, next generation. So next generation is the relation to, to the future that we have in the first sentence. And here in the future. Once again, it is better if we place it at the end of the sentence. But great, it's a nice example. The houses will be more expensive in the future. Nice, nice, nice. Um, how about, uh, let's see. Oh, more kids are using, uh-huh. More kids, oh, this is in a, what you call it, in a continuous, person continuous, great. More kids are using glasses in early ages. Um, a ver, are, are, ah, esta era la cosa. Are wearing glasses at early ages. Así sí. More kids are wearing glasses at early ages. El por qué at? Porque at es el, el pro, uh, preposición. It's the preposition that establishes a very specific time. So if we say at early ages, it means that, you know, it's happening right there in, at early ages. So yeah, more kids are wearing glasses at early ages. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and if you want to make it even more uh, attractive, we can say earlier, at earlier ages. So this means that, you know, it's it's happening even earlier, even at, 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 at younger ages. So, yeah, it's, but this is all of course, just a little bit of a fashionista kind of change. You know, it's not necessary, but you could do it. So more kids are wearing glasses at earlier ages. Now, instead of wearing, because wearing sounds like something you want to do, you can also change the verb and you can use our needing glasses at earlier ages. Esto es simplemente, o sea, el juego en el sentido de qué tan dramática puede ser la información, ¿verdad? O sea, y como les digo, el passive voice no se usa más que todo para eso, se usa para hacer presentaciones, para tratar de llamar la atención de las personas que nos están escuchando. No es que necesariamente 
lo vamos a utilizar en conversaciones del día a día. Passive voice no necesariamente funciona así, sino que es más para casos bien específicos. So, we want to call people's attention. We want to make, you know, the sentences sound more attractive. So, if you say something like, more kids are needing glasses at earlier ages, it's like, okay, what's happening with the kids? You know, like, why is this happening to the kids? So, yeah, that would be a nice, nice example. Um, in the case of Carla, how about you? Can you create or help me create an example using the passive voice? Um, yes, sure. My example is uh, some student uh, will fail the subject or a signature because they haven't uh, been doing the homework. Okay. Uh, they haven't been doing the homework. Thank you. Great. Okay. So some students repeat the subjects because mm, because they uh -huh, haven't, haven't been doing the homework. Uh. Aquí they has to be re repeat the. the... Ajá. Uh -huh. The grade. Ajá. Uh -huh. No, es que estoy, es que, es que el punto es que, a ver, cuando tenemos estudios así al principio, se convierte una vez más en una oración activa. Así okay. que voy a tener que ajá, reacomodarla para que sea eh, completamente, digamos, pasiva. Um, some students, because they haven't, because they haven't been doing the homework, I said uh, some students will repeat. I don't know. Oh, okay. Sorry. Some students will repeat. Mm, some students, because they haven't been doing the homework, will repeat the subject. I think that will sound more as a passive. Because here, it's, I, I, I don't know, the fact that um, some students will repeat the subject because they haven't been doing the homework. I think it works. I think it does work, you know, as a passive. Because, yeah, it's like we're we're stating some students. We're not saying uh, necessarily if you, students. It's right if on. you write uh, only some students will repeat some subject. Mm, that. That's too vague, I think. Uh, we have to repeat. Oh, yeah, if you're specific about a subject, maybe some students will have to repeat math. Maybe then, yeah, that sounds better. That works better. Some students will repeat math because they haven't been doing the homework. Uh, yeah, that sounds more like a passive voice because it was a, a little bit vague, you know. This subject is like, it wasn't necessarily clear. So now it sounds better. So yeah, great. Some students will have to repeat math because they haven't been doing the homework, their homework. Great, that's the way it should work. Very good, thank you very much, Carla. Um, you, can, uh -huh. you can say aren't being, or, or in this case, you can say vegetables aren't being cheaper in September because of the rain. Uh, okay, so vegetables, let me see. Sometimes it's better if you have it written. Aren't, uh, I think it's once again the same thing, becoming, because ah, okay, uh -huh, okay. aren't becoming, <laughs> yeah, it's because it's, it's you know it's something that is changing because become is the 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 word that or the verb that we use to refer to okay. changes to refer to um to something that is going to happen. So vegetables aren't becoming um any cheaper uh by September. No, 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 no. By we can use by there. Aren't becoming any cheaper. Mm, this September, maybe this September. Oh yeah, vegetables aren't becoming any cheaper this September, so it means that um it can you know they can become cheaper later, but by September or this September they're not gonna be cheap. So vegetables aren't becoming any cheaper this September. Nice, that's a nice um you know passive voice example as well. Oh, wait, no. Hmm. 
I think it would be better if we say because of the rain before. Because it will be the cause. It will be the reason mm. why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the rain. Because of the rain. Because of the rain. Um, Base. Vegetables. Uh -huh. Vegetables aren't becoming any cheaper. And then we can take away this. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh because of the lack of rain, maybe. Or no, lack of rain sounds like it only because of that. Because of the unstable. That sounds better. Because of the unstable rain, vegetables aren't becoming any cheaper. Yeah, that sounds more like a passive voice sentence. Because here we're, you know, turning the attention into this because of the unstable rain. So this it, is... It is know, not an easy, an easy... But... Uh... What? <laughs> is it Teba? Topic. Uh, topic, yeah? Yeah, it's not easy. No, <laughs> believe me, it's not. Yes. Yeah, when I was Imagine. when I was studying these, I remember that uh, my teacher, I mean, and I was basically behaving the same way. I remember my teacher will say no to almost every sentence that I thought, this is the one. And I was like, he was like, no, it's not. Because you have a subject right there. It's like the subject is right at the beginning. So you need to place the subject somewhere else it has to be like at the end of the sentence and i was like ah jesus so yeah then i kind of started uh liking the topic better when i got to um academic writing i don't know if you guys have ever heard of that but in my case i had to take two courses about academic writing and when i did that i had to edit like you know over and over and over because the teacher he loved passive voice um, there was one time, the, the biggest challenge that I have had in my life with this topic is that I had to write a whole story about 22 pages about my life without ever mentioning the, um, the pronoun I. It was everything in third person and in passive. So it was wow. so hard. It was so, so hard. I remember that my family used to, they didn't like it. They didn't like me. Uh, you know, being in my computer the whole day, but I had to be like that almost for, I think it was like around three weeks. It was the hardest subject that I have ever had because, yeah, he told us from the very beginning, you know, you guys are going to have to write a story about yourselves without ever saying I. You have to say always third person, always like Oscar, always he. And uh, yeah, it was it was very hard. I remember that Three classmates, they didn't even write anything. You know, they were like, no, it's too hard. I'm, I'm not ready for that. I don't want any of that. Um, so, yeah, but now it's like, you know, I kind of learned how to use the passive and I need to, like, you know, be uh, always paying attention to where passive works and where passive is not present. So, yeah, because of the unstable rain, vegetables are becoming any, aren't becoming any cheaper. It sounds... Uh, a little bit better into a, a passive sentence. Okay, yeah. uh, maybe we can get one more example. Um, I don't know, Leslie, can you provide us one, please? Mm, this house was built by my father. Okay, this house was built by my father. All right, this house was built by my father. Yes, I think this is, yeah, this is um, a bit of a passive. Ah, oh, this house, this house, this house. This house was built by my father. Mm. Este dice que no me gusta. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I think it works. This house was built by my father. Okay, what I will do, the way I will change it, because the problem with passive is that you don't have to be very specific about one a noun at the beginning of this uh sentences. So it would be better if you say something like, uh the house in front of us. And I know it's so redundant, but it's you know, it's the way it works. In front of us, oh sorry, the house in front of us was built by my father. This will work a bit better because you are saying you're saying something that is um, a bit redundant and not straight up direct into the house. 
you know, it's this, the house in front of us was built by my father. So that's more of a passive sort of example. Because if you say this house or, um, you know, a straight referring to a subject, that means that it's an active thing. It would not become passive only by adding by my father at the end, um, because that will simply be a tag at the end. You know, it will work as a tag on like, who's the creator of this? So yeah, that's the, the complication. And I know, I know it's tricky. And that's why I was telling you at the beginning, it's not something that you guys are going to need to use all the time. You know, you use it only when you're like um, making presentations or if you ever work for a newspaper. If you ever get to work for a newspaper, well, then you're going to need to use passive a lot because that's the way in which they normally um, write their, um, their titles. But well, so it's great that it's raining. I think, I mean, I mean here at least it's raining. I don't know if it, where you guys live, it's raining as well. But it's great that it is because it yeah, means it that, is. yeah, because um, it means that we yeah, will, you know, we will have a great night of sleep at least in in my case. Um, so yeah, uh, it's one of those nights when it's great, you know, to finish the class. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your night. I hope that I'll see you here tomorrow again to wrap it up for this week. So thank you very much. Have a good one and see you tomorrow. So bye bye, bye. for now. Okay.